Good ideas stay with you until you eventually write the story. Brian Keane First off, I'd like to say that I've always been a big fan of the horror genre. I mean, some of the first books I've read, namely Pet Cemetery and Dark Tower 3 The Wastelands, were written by horror legend Stephen King. I also gained a love for the books written by Dean Koontz, whose stories lean more towards suspense or fantasy than out-and-out -out horror, but supernatural elements appear in his novels often enough. It was only later on in college that I discovered H.P. Lovecraft, the creator of the infamous Cthulhu and yogg Thoth, and wanted more stories about them. However, after finishing college and having read a lot of Lovecraft stories and that of the writers who followed in his footsteps like August Derleth and Brian Lumley, whom we've already discussed in a previous video, I was hoping to find another horror book that wasn't just the usual ghosts and goblins that that I read about. Lo and behold, I discovered a book called Earthworm Gods by Brian Keane somewhere in SM Baguio. Hi, hello, and welcome again everybody to another episode of Natural Juan. This time around, we're going to discuss the many works of horror writer Brian Keane. However, before all that, I'd like to invite you all to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications. Also, special shout out to Jonathan Green, my patron in Patreon. Patreon. If you'd also like to support my channel and what I do here, you'll find my Patreon information in the description below, along with a PayPal and Gcash account in case you'd just like to make a quick and easy donation. With all that out of the way, let's go deep into the heart of the labyrinth where the works of Brian Keane awaits us. Brian Keane is an American horror writer from Pennsylvania. He was born on September 22, 1967 and joined the US Navy early on in life. He is well known for creating his own pantheon of evil gods called simply the Thirteen, who supposedly predated the creation of the current universe. It is also of little surprise that they bear a strong resemblance to the great old ones and outer gods created by H.P. Lovecraft. Another thing that Brian Keane's work is known for is the amount of violence and gore found in his works, which often takes center stage when otherworldly horrors are not present. Brian Keane not only writes books and blogs, but has also made quite a name for himself in the comics industry. First up, let's discuss his The Rising series, which is probably one of his most famous works. The Rising is a not-so-conventional zombie apocalypse story that's fully mixed in with a heavy dose of cosmic horror. It tells the tale of a father, construction worker Jim Thurmond, seeking to rescue his son Danny from zombies. Unfortunately, these aren't your run-of-the-mill brain-hungry zombies like you usually see on TV or in the movies. These are actually animated corpses possessed by demonic entities, not unlike those found in Peter Hamilton's Night's Dawn trilogy. While they are not the people whose bodies they reanimate, these beings are able to access the dead's memories, allowing them to masquerade as them and manipulate the living's emotions with them. After gathering other distraught survivors to his cause and fighting their way through hordes of intelligent and sadistic undead, Jim makes a desperate bid to find his son in the midst of all the chaos and destruction brought about by the zombies who are led or controlled by a being called Ob, one of the thirteen. However, much to the horror of the survivors, even after they fought off all the zombies, they learned that the greatest threat to their existence might not be zombies or the extra-dimensional horrors controlling them, but human soldiers who have turned evil. Indeed, one of the main messages of The Rising and its sequel, City of the Dead, is that the greatest threat to human existence might just be other humans. After all, even in real life, there's no shortage of people who like to take advantage of disaster to exploit or destroy their fellow man, even if it causes further damage to their societies. Next up, we have the Conqueror Worm, or Earthworm Gods, which, 
like I said, is probably one of the first Brian Keane novels I've ever read. This one features a group of survivors trying to fight against the dangers brought about by a perpetual storm that never seems to stop. Add to that the fact that the survivors must also square off against giant worms, whom the book is named for, and various sea monsters that have risen from the depths now that the earth is covered in water. We start the journey from the perspective of Teddy Garnett, an old man and war veteran who wonders about his fate now that the end of the world seems to be at hand. He narrates how one day it just started raining and never stopped, and how entire cities have been submerged underwater. He learns through the news that many coastal towns, cities, and countries like the Philippines have somehow disappeared from the world map and that there's no sign that it will ever really stop raining now that it's begun. Teddy soon travels with his friend Carl Seaton to learn more about their predicament and if there's anything that they can do about it. In their journey, they soon encounter two survivors, Kevin and Sarah, who also share their stories with them once they are taken to safety. It is then Kevin's turn to narrate the story, discussing his experiences with the ongoing calamity around them and two monstrous beings called Leviathan and Behemoth, who may very well be the cause of all the horrors that have now gripped the world. Then we have Urban Gothic which, unlike the first two mentioned here, is not an apocalyptic horror story, but instead focuses on the ordeals of youths who've stumbled upon a house of horrors. The story takes on the perspective of Carrie, one of the youths who fled into an old house in Philadelphia after mistaking another group of youths to be criminals, and the old Mr. Watkins, a man who knows more about the old house than he's letting on. As the novel goes on, we learn more about the horrid creatures that make their home inside the house, and just what a danger they are to the society around them. All in all, Urban Gothic feels like your stereotypical slasher film, with monstrous mutants straight out of movies like The Hills Have Eyes and Wrong Turn. However, when reading from the perspective of Mr. Watkins, we learn a deeper meaning to the gruesome novel. We learn that the surrounding community of poor people have always had the means to destroy the horrid old house and the inbred horrors living within it, but have always left it alone out of fear. Another thing to note was that that while the local community seemed threatening at first, had the youths just kept calm and not run straight towards the old house after their car broke down, they would not have had to endure its horrors. Also, while urban gothic does not really include one of the 13 in it, like Ab, Leviathan, or Behemoth, they are nonetheless mentioned in passing, and it is revealed to us that the residents of the old and evil house might just be some of their worshippers. Unfortunately, from my own point of view, the novel focuses too much on the deformed deviants of the house hunting and then brutally killing Carrie's friends. We get too many scenes of monstrous brutality throughout the novel, and even one nauseating description of sexual assault, when more stories Stories from old Mr. Watkins about the house would have been more appropriate and entertaining. Overall, Brian Keane has written many novels and stories, many of which contain the 13 godlike beings who existed before our universe was created. Other creatures similar to them include Meebul and the ghoul from the novel of the same name. All of them are a part of Brian Keane's The Labyrinth Mythos that links a lot of his works together in much the same way Stephen King's works are bound together through the Dark Tower series. So, if you love horror and gruesome stories and want to take a short break from the works of Stephen King and Dean Koontz, perhaps you'd like to give the works of Brian Keane a try. And that's it for this episode of Natural Juan. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications. Also, if you'd like to support my channel and what I do here, you can check out my Patreon information in the description below, along with a PayPal and Gcash account in case you'd just like to make a quick and easy donation. Natural Juan, out!